Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper. Glad to be with you for this week's edition of Takedown, brought to you in part by Nike Wrestling. Well, Beat the Streets is well known for bringing Olympic caliber wrestling to the heart of Manhattan. While the annual gala has generated a ton of interest for the sport, it's what the organization does the remaining 364 days a year that truly makes a difference. As part of the 2017 benefit, Shane Sigler and his team put together a short film highlighting the history and impact of Beat the Streets. My name is Pearl Fletcher. I go to Harry S. Truman High School in the Bronx in New York City. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning. I get my whole house together, get my brothers together for school, get my sister up. My name is Brandon Nunez. I go to school at John Brown in Flushing, Queens, New York City. I have to leave the house at about 6.10. I have to get on the bus at 6.18. I take two buses. I take the Q52, and then I take the Q88, and then I walk about three minutes, and I should be there. Living in the city is difficult. We're not a town. We are a city. And everybody is from a different location. Everybody's coming from a different space. I'm not knocking my own background, but you know, my mom and my dad drove me to practice. They waited for me to finish, and they drove me home. I don't know if I'd made it if I had to walk a mile, hop on the bus, and then take a subway. I had a friend, Nancy Easton, who was running a charter school on the Lower East Side, and she asked me if I would do a six or seven week course with some of her seventh and eighth graders in wrestling. At a place called Hamilton Fish Recreational Center, I went over there and you know, started throwing kids around, and I met a guy named Rob Schoenberg. You know, I'd said at one point, hey, we should have more wrestling in the city, and lo and behold, four months later, he showed up at my office with Al Bevilacqua, uh, and Al had had this vision for a long time and had been trying to build this concept of Beat the Streets. They asked for money and I wrote him a check uh, to buy a mat and start a program at Baruch Middle School, and where Rob's kid was going. And so the first program really was Baruch. It's been a labor of love and a journey, uh, you know, a grind, I'd say, and we got a long way to go. What really drew me in was the first tournament I wrestled at. I think it was the Charles Glass tournament which is like the novice tournament, and I did terrible. And that made me feel like not only do I need to be in this sport, but I need to prove to myself that I'm not terrible. When I wrestle, I mainly like to use my speed, so I'm a type of like low single guy. But if I get into underhooks and everything, I like to throw. I go for what the person gives me. I don't go up to their level, I wrestle to my level. And if they give me a single leg, I'm gonna shoot a single leg. If they give me a double, I'm gonna shoot a double. You are responsible for you. You are accountable to the rest of your team. These are lessons that, you know, as a young person, normally you don't get until you run into them accidentally. Wrestling challenges you to challenge yourself daily. Participating in the sport is you're going to lose. You know, you're going to get beat and it's going to hurt, but then you're going to build yourself up. You could be down five points in a match with 30 seconds left, but if you give up, you're only pushing yourself down. It's a sport that teaches people how to have self-confidence, how to be tough, and how to lean off the front foot. This is my first year at wrestling, basically, and I just went 0-2 here. Why, why even continue? But Mark Anthony Macias had mentioned to me, next year you will be a state placer. Next year I was a state placer. My junior year after I placed at States, Mark Anthony Macias said, you will be a state champ. And then my next year, I won a state title. So he always believed in me, which is the reason why I always believed in him. Over the last 10 years, Beat the Streets says, move mountains. We support 150 programs and over 3,000 kids. And so the only way we can do that is, is by the generous support of people that, that believe in our mission. We use those donations to pay for the middle school coaches, uh, to pay for buses to take kids to tournaments. Uh, we fund our own staff. I wouldn't have ever even learned about the sport if it wasn't for Beat the Streets because they provided the mats. They provided the wrestling. My first pair of wrestling shoes were Beat the Streets wrestling shoes. We as a nonprofit, the Harlem Jets, would not be able to afford all those things on our own. Before wrestling, I, I've never been out of New York. I got to see Oklahoma, North Dakota, Texas. Every once in a while, I get depressed thinking, ah, you know, we're not moving them along fast enough, we're not having enough impact on kids' lives. And 
Then I'll talk to one of the coaches and he'll say, hey, in my neighborhood, for my kids, just getting them together and getting them on a mat and having them feel like they've got a, a second family, that's a win. I worked hard and I knew what I had to do. And I remember actually when I showed up to one of the practices, I was talking to Coach Mike and he was like, yeah, where do you want to go to school? Do you want to go to college? I was like, yeah, I want to go to Brown. He was like, okay, we'll make that happen for you. Yeah, I don't believe in ceilings, you know, and I don't believe in limitations. I ended up at Brown because I wanted to end up at Brown. I want kids in the future to look at me and be like, okay, if Brandon can do it, then I can do it. You know, I think wins come in all shapes and sizes. Our mission really is to have a long-term positive impact on kids' lives. Well, the 2017 Beat the Streets benefit featuring Team USA versus Japan raised more than $1.2 million, which will go to support more than 3,000 youth wrestlers from around the state. Make a donation or find your local chapter when you visit btsny.org. Stick around. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Casey General Stores, famous for pizza. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. I'm Don Beneveni, Beneveni Chevrolet and Granger. We recently made the switch to uh, LED lighting. Uh, we purchased it from uh, Yellow Blue. Uh, we've had a very good experience. The lighting has saved us approximately $1,000 a month. I made the switch to yellow blue LED lighting, and you should too. The International Olympic Committee has announced the addition of climbing, skateboarding, karate, surfing, and baseball. You remember those from the original games. According to the IOC, the goal is to make the games more youthful, more urban, and more inclusive to females. Unfortunately, the additions come at the expense of other sports, including wrestling. The sport, our sport, wrestling, will have 56 fewer slots in Rio, bringing the total number to just 16 athletes per weight. With more on the announcement, we're joined by world silver medalist and 2012 Olympian Jake Herbert. Jake, when we negotiated our way back into the 2020 Games, as you recall, was this part of the agreement? No, I don't remember that being one of the conditions either. And I think it's more of just like, well, listen, we're going we're gonna to let you back in, but we're going to take more. It, it's the same thing when they go to cutting... Um, programs in title nine kind of uh sorry not due to title nine but like boise state cutting the wrestling program now for a um baseball team right so it's the same thing we're gonna cut the program because we know your alumni is gonna get behind it if you're gonna do it you're gonna produce it anyways well wrestling is gonna do whatever they can to be part of that olympic sport olympic spot because we haven't positioned ourselves to say like hey we can do this by ourselves or we can do something um, without the Olympic tag and Olympic Games. So we'll take and whatever beating, even if it's just one athlete, we, we would twiddle ourselves down where there's just one athlete wrestling for men's, women, and Greco and wrestling, if that means we're still a part of it. And then I ask you, well, why? You know, now they have nothing less to take out. What's the next step? So it's, I don't like the position, Scott. I feel scared. I don't, I don't like it. And I, and I don't know what to do. That's Here's the biggest problem I have with this. Even as they announced the cut of 56 entries, look at the performance of the 2016 games, the, mo the most successful appearance for wrestling to date with record-breaking viewership both online and on television. Why would they take and look at those numbers, Jake, and still uh, impress the 56-entry cut? We, we forget how much it's changed, Scott. Right. So up until 1988... They used to have the summer and winter Olympics where every four years combined. Now it's every two years, right, for relativity so that you don't go that long decade without anything and then all the Olympics are back. It's every two years, so you're summer, winter, summer, winter. 
Um, and now the Olympics are doing whatever they can to stay relevant with the times, adding skateboarding, adding kiteboarding, adding three on three basketball. You know, they're just making up sports and things like that now to throw in there. So it's um, I don't see it being a thriving. Um, I don't I don't see it surviving. Um, and, and if it does survive for the time I'm a grandfather, I don't see it being the same thing that we remember what the Olympic Games are and what they wore and what they stand for. But that's that comes with change and that comes with evolution. And it's um, it, it, it's just sad that the people at the top, um, you know, are kind of ruining it for the rest of us is the way I look at it. We're talking with Jake Herbert. Uh, Jake, would we be better off or better serving our athletes? And after all, isn't that the, the goal to serve the athletes of our sport? Would we be better off putting our assets toward uh, continuing to build the world championships? They're at 10 weights each. What are your thoughts? I mean, w whatever we can do as a sport, what, one, wrestling needs leadership. Um, we need somebody who's reason. When, when we refer to wrestling, what's wrestling doing? Who, who does that refer to? What are the organizations that make it up when I say, hey, wrestling, let's do this? And then step two is um, we should be doing everything we can to become self-fulfilling, right? Um, Self-sustaining. Uh, because if we can't sustain by ourselves, if we're just a charity, we're never going to make it, right? So that's going to be number one is wrestling has to find a way to become self-sustaining. Um, you know, and, and that, that means we got to have, you know, events, we got to have series, we got to have fans, we got to have promotions, we got to pay the athletes well. Um, the NFL isn't what it is because, it, you know, they're not what they are because of the NFL, they, they make it because they're self-fulfilling, they're self-sustaining, they make money, they, they attract people, they draw crowds. We have the ability as a sport to do that. Look at all the viewers, the wrestling people that click in and do it. We just got to find a way that it's profitable and then it gets down to the athletes and the leadership so that they can continue doing it. Not like, all right, ILC, we depend on you to make this happen. Or, um, you know, United World Wrestling, we depend on you to make this happen. You know, we, we need it. And, and, you know, wrestling has failed to do that so far. We've continually failed to do that. Jake, thanks so much. Thank you, guys. All right, don't go anywhere. Back after this, you're watching Takedown. Thanks to McBride Matt. Stay tuned. This month's special at Casey's General Stores is any large made-from-scratch two-topping pizza for only $12. For easy, quick service, order online or use our mobile app right now. Casey's, famous for pizza. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookies is the one. What's up guys, I want to tell you about a new product that I am extremely excited about. It is the Pure and Clean Sports Skin Defense. It comes in a 16 ounce spray bottle and it comes in a little bitty travel size spray bottles. I have one of these, throw it in my bag, go straight to the gym. A lot of these gyms I train at, whether it be boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, grappling, strength and conditioning, it all has bacteria floating around, they all have viruses floating around, they all have fungus floating around, and the last thing you want is to get a fungus, a virus, get sick, any kind, of, um, any kind of wounds that are gonna turn into any kind of uh, skin infections to take you off of the mat. Every single second that you spend off the mat or out of the gym is one second that you're wasting. So, Pure and Clean Sports came up with an amazing solution to give you the right amount of protection on your skin. You spray it right on your skin. Stay pure, stay clean, checking them out. PureandCleanSports.com.
Produced by legendary videographer Dave Doc Bennett, the National Wrestling Hall of Fame has released a new series on the lives and careers of its brand new inductees. Over the next month, we'll feature all four members of the 2017 class, starting with two-time national champ and three-time All-American and our friend Chuck Yegla. I was born and raised in Waterloo, Iowa, uh, the youngest of four boys. Uh, my working class family. My father worked for John Deere and my mother was an office manager at Culligan and grew up well, just enjoying all kinds of sports. I started wrestling in fifth grade. I went to a parochial school. One of my brothers was a year and a half older than me, so he was two, year, two grades ahead of me. And they, that was the first year they started a program at this parochial school. Uh, the coach was Bob Bozen. He was a former West High School wrestler under Bob Siddons. So we thought we'd just give it a try, and we both fell in love with it. My high school career, I started out low, slowly, but got better each year. And by my senior year, I qualified for sectionals, districts, and state, but I actually got second in each of those to the same wrestler. So I never was a state champion, but was runner-up in state as a senior in high school. The University of Iowa at the time uh, was announced that Gary Kurlmeyer was gonna be in his first year as head coach. This would be my first year as a freshman, and he was announced that Dan Gable was going to be the assistant coach there. So that got me interested because I idolized Gable, and I also had two older brothers, uh, one in law school and one actually on the wrestling team, uh, my older brother Steve, at the time. So that was my big influence on deciding to go to the University of Iowa. Uh, Gary Kirtlemeyer was a very innovative coach, and it was great to be a st there at the beginning of his start of the program and then with coach gable there you know he pretty much ran the practices and and he was just great to learn how to how to wrestle and learn how to train and learned a lot from him on how hard you could work you know to get better um, in college you know i i made varsity right away as a freshman but did not get to compete in the big 10 or national tournament at the end of the season i got beat out by the guy that weighed above me dan holm and then uh sophomore year i got fourth in nationals so you know, started to, again, you know, improve each year a little bit. And then by my junior year, I was a national champ, Big Ten champion and national champion, and then repeated as a Big Ten national champion my senior year, and was honored with being a named outstanding wrestler at the NCAA tournament my senior year. Uh, probably my most memorable opponent and gets brought up the most is, is Lee Kemp from the University of Wisconsin. I knew the match was gonna be really tough. He had beat me soundly twice that year. I wrestled him a total of four times that year. But uh, he beat me in the dual meet 4-0 in front of their home crowd. That hurt a lot, Chuck. <laughs> but uh, and then he beat me in the Big Ten finals 4-0. So going in, into the finals match, I, I didn't really have a lot of confidence, but I always knew that I, I wasn't going to give up, so I, I gave it the best. Uh, that I could and it was a great match it was uh, we went into overtime and back then they had referees decisions where the officials decided who won and um, it was a split referees decision and I joke now I, 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 I joke that hey at least one of the officials had it right <laughs> but uh, Chuck has always been a great competitor a good friend too you know? and then of course most people know he won the next three years so he was a three-time national champion and could have been the first four-time national champion had I not beat him in the finals uh, my junior year. So that that was probably, he's my most memorable opponent and that was probably my most memorable match, you know, in college. Uh, making the 1980 U.S. Olympic team was probably my biggest honor in wrestling and, and a huge deal for me. You know, that's what I trained for. I was an alternate in 1976 and made two world teams, 1977 and 1979, and then of course the ultimate is to, to get an Olympic gold medal. So I made the 1980 team, and then of course Jimmy Carter uh, decided we were gonna boycott when the Soviets invaded Afghanistan. So, you know, that was a huge disappointment, you know, and probably bothers me more today than it did, you know, back then. I th think, uh, well, number one, being a good wrestler, I think translates to being a good official, just because you understand, you know, all the ins and outs of wrestling. And I think for me, I wanted to stay involved in wrestling in that that was a way for me to keep involved by being official. And I think just I had the respect of the coaches because of my wrestling background. Every wrestler does not necessarily be, will be a good official. 
But this young man was one of the ones that became a very, very good official. Um, I learned a lot from him, particularly the way he dealt with people and how he positioned himself. Um, he's just, he was an outstanding official, and, and, and I was amazed. Oh, wrestling, I think, is interesting because it's a one-on-one -on -one sport. I mean, it's, it's really hard to compare it to other sports because it's, it's, it's you out there on the mat against your opponent, and once you get out there, you know, nobody else can help you and nobody else can do anything for you. So I think that makes it a very interesting sport. And also the fact that you don't have to be the fastest or the strongest or the biggest or the toughest. You know, there's so many things that go into wrestling. You can work on your technique, your conditioning, and there's so many different variables that can make you a great wrestler. And I think that's what makes it a very interesting and unique sport. The hard work you put in is directly correlated to what you can achieve. You know, so you no know, matter what you're doing, like in, my, in your job or in your personal life, if you work hard at it, you'll get more out of it. So I think I, you learn that in wrestling, that the harder you work, you know, the, the more success you'll have. Uh, I've had the privilege to work alongside of him in business for 20 years. If I was going to describe Chuck, I would tell you he's a, uh, and, and he demonstrated this clear back in high school before he even got to college, just a person of, uh, of great work ethic, character, and integrity. In my personal life now, I'm married to Sarah. We've been married for 22 years, and I have one daughter, Nikki, and she is married, and her and her husband have one son, Justin, and I have a stepdaughter that's also married, and her and her husband, Matt, have two children. We have a grandson, Jackson, and a granddaughter, and her name is Sadie. For me to be inducted as a distinguished member and join the, the outstanding group of other wrestlers that over the years have, have been inducted as a distinguished member is just a tremendous honor. I'm, I'm very proud of it and also very humbled at the same time. All right, special thanks to Doc Bennett and the staff at your National Wrestling Hall of Fame. Fans, stay tuned. Arizona State head coach Zeke Jones joins us after this short commercial timeout. You're watching Takedown. Thanks to Coca-Cola. generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defense so defend what you have built. All right, welcome back to Takedown. Our coverage continues in Tempe, Arizona, home of the reigning Pac-12 champs and highly respected head coach, Zeke Jones. ASU is getting a lot of attention these days to the strength of the Valencia brothers and the balance of your squad. Uh, how do you feel today about the makeup of your team looking at the fall? You know, I feel good. You know, we're in our third year here, and, you know, we finally got our first recruiting class in the lineup last year, five kids, and they finished 12th at the NCAA tournaments tournament alone uh, we start to you know fill in the gaps in some of the other weight classes and you know I think we can start to make some noise. Um, recently it was announced um, out of UWW's home office that uh, uh, 
uh, wrestling's quota would be cut by 56 entries. I wasn't aware of an agreement made when we negotiated our way back into the games to further cut wrestling. Were you? No, I, I don't know that that was a part of the deal. I think everything was being discussed at the time in an effort to you know continue to have wrestling in the Olympic Games. Uh, I'd heard that, but not as an official. Yeah, that was part of the deal to stay in. I think it was just a discussion point. Um, what is your take on, on the youth of uh, Team USA right now? Uh, we've had, we had a very exciting World Team Trials in Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, what's your take away from Lincoln? Well, first off, it was one of the best trials I had ever seen. Uh, the energy, the drama, the, the crowd, um, the storylines. I thought it was unbelievable. Uh, I think the, the youth of the team doesn't surprise me because that's the bell curve of where wrestling's headed, right? That the teams are getting younger in all sports all over the world, and wrestling is, is one of those. And So I think youth is going to reign the day. I also think it, within that youth, they got to hustle because they've got to, most of them, as we all know, are folk styling, so they need to you know, hone their freestyle skills heading into the, to the world championships. And I think they can wrestle good. I really think there's, you know, there's some, you know, there's some talent on that team and certainly can compete well. And I've shown that. Always good to talk to you. Great catching up. Zeke Jones has been our guest on the Nike hot seat. Zeke, thank you so much. Thanks Scott. You have a good one. Again, we want to thank Jake Herbert, Doc Bennett, Shane Sigler, and Zeke Jones. For more wrestling news, interviews, weekly prizes, and the longest-running radio show in the sport, check us out online. It's free anytime at TakedownWrestle.com. Until we meet next week, I'm Scott Casper. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time for another edition of Takedown.